Yes, people, yes, people, yes, people. Welcome back to the We Talk Football podcast. Better late than never, but never late is better. It's your boy, Jamie, joined again by my guy, Quakey, to the left. How you doing? Not too bad, brother. Not too bad. Obviously, it's a day of mourning, but we'll get a bit more into that. Um, how you doing anyway? Yeah, we'll get into that in a, in a little minute. And, you know, we've got a guy here, a guy that we know is Dan McCarthy, a guy that, you know, we've known for years. But half the internet know him as Maca Sport. I know him as the guy that used to boss up players on Six Aside Down Warners Bridge, if you know. How you doing, Dan? Hey, good old days, man. I'm good, man. I'm, good. I'm excited to, to reconnect with you boys and, and talk. Yeah, like Quake said, it's, it's a day of morning, but, you know, it's always a good time to catch up with old friends and we'll try to get the best out of it. Yeah, man. It's, well, it's been years, obviously. Anyone that doesn't know, you know, we all come from Essex. We all used to play for the same Six Aside team. Dan went off... Uh, to pastures new to to you know play in America, and he now coaches in America, and he's also one of the the main inside guys. Um, you can find him on uh, under Maca Sport on Twitter. But Quaker, I'll I'll let you lead this one. As you said, day of mourning, the big man has gone. How are you feeling about that? Um. So yeah, just uh, to preface for anyone who might be watching this at a later date, um, found out earlier today that Frank Lampard has um been let go by Chelsea. Um, we actually had this. Uh, interview or podcast with Dan Pre, but before this news came out, just happened to be that it fell on the day that Lampard got let go, which is a surprise to, um, well, surprise to me, maybe not surprised to people who might be in the know. But after we had that win against Luton, where the kids played well, uh, Tammy Tammy banged in the hat trick and Mason was captain. I thought things were looking up for Chelsea, especially with um, with Wolves on the horizon. I thought we'd get a win in that game, um, but yeah, Lampard's been let go, and it's kind of been. It's been a devastating blow to a lot of Chelsea fans. If you kind of track it on Twitter, you track it on social media, a lot of us have the same sentiment. Obviously, you have that set and select group of fans that were like Lampard out um, because of whatever reasons. But I feel like most Chelsea fans were willing to give him time and thought this would be a kind of sea change of Chelsea, where previously we got rid of loads of managers and it's been kind of like a merry-go-round of Chelsea. I thought this was the guy to, to leave a, a lasting legacy and dynasty of Chelsea. And that's not been the case. So... The fact that we've got Dan here to kind of elaborate on it and like, share his feelings on it is, is kind of perfect timing. So I suppose the most natural question would be, Dan, what's your thoughts on the, on the Lampard sacking? Yeah, it's, um, I mean, like I was telling you boys off there and telling others, you know, LA time, I'm eight hours behind UK time and woke up at 7am, usual day, right? Just kind of ticking along, got a win against Luton, thinking nothing of it. And I, I, I can't even lie and say I was, I was told, but told obviously while I was sleeping. Yeah, so just woke up to an absolute mess. Just woke up to an absolute mess of, you know, decision made. And, uh, you know, from a selfish point, my, my phone, as I told you boys, has messed up, you know, hundreds and hundreds of messages with, like I said, people who are in the game, people who are around the game, people in the club, people outside the club, um, you know, people asking for information, people giving me information, you know. So, yeah, it was just a bit of a mess. And, you know, I'm usually up by 7.15, kind of riding the bike, you know, starting my day and, I was in bed for an hour, an hour and a half, just absolute, like just going through everything and just, yeah, it was, it's emotional, man. It's emotional. Man. Just, from, you know, I think people on Twitter will know now that obviously I back Lampard, I'm a Lampardian guy, but yeah, it was a, it's a sad day. It's a day of mourning and night. Like, people might be saying like something is so emotional, but it's Frank Lampard, isn't it? You know, yeah. Exactly. That's the thing. It's Frank Lampard, like as a, a player that all Chelsea fans grew up idolising um, and off the back of an incredible I say incredible. A lot of other opposing fans will say that Chelsea should be finishing in the top four. But off the back of a transfer ban, um, off the back of the best player in the Premier League leaving our club, he managed to steal the club to a fourth place finish, which nobody before the season predicted, no matter what they say. If you look at all the pundits, look at everybody predicting on Twitter or on social media, nobody predicted Chelsea to finish in the top four. And Lampard did that. Um, and you thought he would be given a lot more time than previous managers because he is Frank Lampard. Um, but the fact that it's kind ha of happened after after a win against Luton where the kids that he has brought through and that which will, will be his last legacy, the fact that it's happened after a game like that, leads me to think that that wouldn't have happened if there was 40,000 fans in the stadium singing Super Frankie Lampard. So what's your thoughts on that in terms of the fact that the board have made this, this, this decision whilst we're in a lockdown and whilst fans can't actually voice their displeasure to them in a public forum? Uh, I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit more on it for you guys but my my true statement my kind of signature signature statement would be if if fans were allowed in the stadium Frank Lampard would still be Chelsea manager right now I I, I know that I'm, I'm generally I believe that personally it's kind of what I'm told and that's kind of what I'm choosing to believe that if Frank Lampard had 42,000 screaming his name and 
and you know the banners are going up where they were you know the shed and obviously at the banner made for frank he would still be here right now because um from what i'm told and heard roman the, the fan base plays a huge part in roman's thinking um if the fan base is happy and backing the manager you know there's, there's an assumption that they can give him more time i think we saw that with antonio conte i think he was a very controversial character um within the club and around the club but because the, the fans actually enjoyed him and liked him they gave him maybe a little bit more time than, they, than he probably warranted right and imagine what Lampard, it, no matter if, Lampard, if we lost every game, 10 games in a row, Stafford Bridge will still back Frank Lampard. I, I genuinely believe that because you can argue about this whole Twitter fans versus proper fans, right? And also Chelsea, proper Chelsea versus Chelsea fans. But at the end of the day, the facts are the facts. It's the more the old school proper Chelsea who are going to Stafford Bridge. And we've all seen their opinions and their thoughts on Twitter, right? They would be backing Lampard to the hill. So to answer that question, I think, yeah. He would still be in the job right now if fans were allowed. And you know, he and the team would do better. I genuinely believe that. I genuinely believe that because we the, the Chelsea family would have come together and backed Lampard and, and Lampard would have felt better, would have had more energy about him, and he would have been able to put that to the players and the players would have seen that. And it just would have been a lot a lot more cohesive, you know. And how do you think that like leaves leaves Frank Lampard in terms of the taste it leaves in his mouth? Because as a player, he was kind of shoved out the back door, didn't really get to say goodbye to the fans. Um as as a manager. It seems like it's done. It's been done a similar way, although there are reports saying that he kind of knew that his time was done after the Leicester game. But again, with unceremoniously not being able to say goodbye to fans or really not been given the proper send off. So, do you reckon that affects or severs ties that Frank Lampard had with Chelsea going forward, or do you reckon the fact that he is super Frank that 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 will just reestablish itself going forward? I think in an ideal world, you'd like to think that Lampard will stay loyal to Chelsea and he will love Chelsea no matter what, right? Um, because of his affinity with the club in terms of a player perspective. I think it was if it was just a pure manager relationship, maybe he's going down the route of maybe a Jose Mourinho. I think you can clearly see now that Jose Mourinho doesn't really have any affinity to Chelsea anymore. I mean, he took over Tottenham. He said repeated things about Chelsea in the media that you probably wouldn't expect from him. So I think, you know, it's different with Lampard because he's playing relationships. They will always be a legend in that respect. So I think he can kind of maintain, hopefully, a more positive relationship with the club. And there's people even saying this early that, if Lampard goes away, which I think he will, he'll still be a manager, by the way. He's still going to manage for the next 10, 20 years. That's what he wants to do. He can be, he'll get a decent job after this. I know that for sure. And, you know, he can still go away here five, 10 years, you know, learn and learn his track. He can easily come back. He can easily come back. And I think he knows that. I think there's a part of him that maybe knows that. So I think he'll be smart to kind of keep his affinity strong with the club and keep his options open with that because there's always that opportunity. You know, we've seen it before with Jose. Um, and I think if you're giving Jose that opportunity and Lampard showed significant improvement in his managerial career, which I think he will because you learn better from his experience, right? Then maybe he can come back. So, yeah, that's what I'm hoping for, man. And, you know, whatever happens, and we've always we've all said it, right, every corner of the fan base, yeah. whatever happens, right, Lampard's still a legend of Chelsea Football Club, no matter what. For sure. And even the fact that Roman Abramovich has uh, come out and actually issued a statement, like how, how rare is that? The fact that he's, he's come out like there, there's clearly a respect there between Roman Abramovich and, you know, Lampard. And, you know, the fans don't think any less of Lampard at all. I'd, I'd be inclined to agree with you. I, I actually think, you know, Jose did it, didn't he? He went away um, from Chelsea and then ended up coming back again. Was successful in both spells, but you wouldn't be surprised if Frank Lampard did the same and, the only thing I question is what's Frank Lampard's next job? You know, it, does he stay in the Premier League or does he look to go around the world? Who knows? You know, you see, you see, you see Gerard in, in Scotland, for example, doing amazing things with Rangers, you know, but I'd be intrigued to see where he goes next. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think his next job has got to be obviously calculated, let's be honest, right? Two bad jobs in a row, you're struggling. So mm. I think it's got to be a calculated decision. I can maybe see it being. Uh, maybe like a champion, like another high championship club, or maybe like even abroad. I can definitely see that with Lampard, like even something like MLS. Or again, it could be a wide range. By the way, I, I'm not Frank. You know, he he might be only exclusive thing, but we don't know, which I'd highly doubt. But I think he, you know, it's common knowledge that Lampard turned down two or three good jobs for at Chelsea. Like he was offered good jobs after Derby, but took the Chelsea job because it's Chelsea. Um, so there's, there's a lot of love for Lampard around the football world. Like, there's a lot of people that believe Frank Lampard will be a good manager and still do, mm. despite this. Because, you know, you could argue that Frank Lampard came in and done his job. You know, he got Chelsea top four. He, he reinstated the connection between the academy. He was part of, you know, um, even though they weren't his signings, we now know. 
it was part of getting them big signings in because he thinks Paul, right, the Lampard Paul, they say now. So he's done he's done a lot of what he was expected to do. Um, yeah. It's just unfortunate he wasn't able to kind of establish it in a further sense. But I think he'll get a good job, like whether it, you know there's banter now going around the platform about him getting the Celtic job. But I imagine that Lampard versus <laughs> Gerard in Scotland. I don't think that will happen, but. I could see like a job like that, if that makes sense. Like something where he'll have a go at a title, he'll be one of the big clubs in the respective league and he might have a go at a title or if he stays in England and maybe, you know, a top championship club or even a yeah. Premier League, you know. I think I think a job like that would be would be good for him because it would allow him the necessary time to, you know, develop as a manager. When you're um, a manager of Chelsea, you are, you know, you're under a spotlight, you're everything you do is under a magnifying glass. So he never really had the opportunity to, you know, make mistakes. And if he does, they are blown up in his face because Chelsea are expected to finish minimum top four every season. So yeah. I'd like, I, I'm, you know, ultimately as a neutral, I, I would like to see, obviously he came for at West Ham, but I would like to see Frank Lampard do well as a young English manager, you know, and it's a shame how things have gone today, but I'd love to see him go to another club where he's going to get some time to really develop and, you know, you know, you know, buy some time in the game you know but yeah. I'll let you carry on Quakes because I know you, you've you got so much to say about Chelsea no, no not even I was just uh, picking up on a couple of things that Dan was saying in terms of Lampard re-establishing that connection with the academy boys uh, or the academy as a whole um, obviously as Chelsea fans we watch these boys and we know these boys can play um, whether it's Tammy whether it's Mason whether it's Reese, whether it's Billy like we know that these boys can play and these are players that Lampard's established in the first team a lot of other fans I think that these players might be in limbo right now because obviously there's there's things going up around online about Lampard's affinity for Mason Mount. And I think you can see that in the fact that he made him the captain in the last game in charge when he knew it was going to be the last game in charge. Kind of like his last legacy. Um, where do you think that leaves those players that if reports are to be believed that Tuchel is going to come in and replace Lampard? If, if that's the case, where do you reckon that players like Mount and Tammy and Reese James fit into Tuchel's plan going forward with Chelsea? Yeah, I mean, just quickly, like the Mason Mount captain thing last game, it's, that's emotional, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, kind of, I spoke to someone close to Mason, like, about that, you know, and it was just cool. It was just like, you know, it was just really cool. And now we know why he did that, which is, that speaks volumes, by the way, of Frank Lampard's character. You know, argue manager or good manager or not, if he knows what he's doing. Like, what a guy. Yeah. What a guy to do that, you know. So, um, yeah, um, just kind of, like you are saying about two shows, like that's definitely happening. By the way, like that, that's done. Like that, he's literally signed the contract. Like that's done. Um, he he will be our manager, and he'll be in there before the Wolves game. So that's done. Um, yeah, he's got this. You know, he's got this this image, and he he said it in interviews that he will play youth players. Like he he generally believes in academy prospects. That's what he said, right? And we know with politics and football that which you can put them together. Um, people say one thing, do another. But he, you know, he, we can only go on what he said as of, as of now, right? And he said that he will play. And, I mean, if there's an academy in the world that you play you know, academy prospects in, it's Chelsea, right? Our academy is going to be madness. So, um, yeah, I think, I'd like to think that he, he's got two decisions to make, boys. He's got one decision is he goes with what he what he knows and trusts, who he likes, which would be, we know now he likes Rudy Gar, he knows he likes Jorginho. He, you know, he, he, he probably likes Shiru, just kind of as a guess, but the first two are not. Or he, he, he's smart, in my opinion, he's smart and he goes with the players who are on form, regardless mm. if he likes them or not. Callum Martin Adoy, Billy Gilmore, Mason Mount, Tammy Abraham, etc. That's the decision he's got to make here. Does he go with what he's trying to trust in and what he kind of knows based on one day and what he's known before taking the job? Or does he follow in the footsteps of what Lampard's kind of, you know, discovered and what he's laid, the foundations he's laid, and he goes. With that, I'd like to think that he'll go with a second option, yeah, and that he'll play who's currently because he needs to get results quick, right, to win the fan base over. Let's be honest, a divided fan base, uh, and he's got expectations to, to get. He's he's going to be expected to do well in this six months or whatever it is. So that's that's, that's not getting twisted. So yeah, I think I'd like to think that he'll play the players on form who need to be played. A lot of like the like team success is predicated on your strikers scoring goals. And obviously that's been something the team at Burnley struggled with a lot this season. Do you reckon two shells kind of been brought in to bring the best out of those two blockbuster signings that we made in the summer in terms of Kai Havertz and Timo Werner? Do you reckon that was in, a, in the board's minds when they brought in two shell? I do, yeah. I think the German speaker thing, like the Athletic obviously reported, that, which had uh, truth in it. Um, you know, there's a preference for the German speaking thing. There's a preference from Roman for the German philosophy in general, right? You've seen all these big coaches now come out of Germany, 
kind of the philosophy that's coming out of, of, of that country in the respect of obviously someone that was linked to us in the interim basis, you know, Ragnick, who's like the philosopher now of German football, right? And Klopp and Tuchel and Nagelsmann have all come from that belief of thinking. So, yeah, um, I think that definitely played a part in it. Um, you know, there were rumours that Nagelsmann was the number one target, but he was never leaving Leipzig now. And now we're hearing today that actually Tuchel was, or Tuchel was Roman's number one. So it's all very confusing right now. Um, Tuchel, I, I tweeted on it, I reported it, if, you know, whatever. Um, he, uh, he, he wanted a job. He was desperate for the job. Like, as soon as that, well, there was whispers and the parents that he could get it, he wanted it. And as soon as Chelsea offered him, he bit. He took it immediately. And there was there were conversations happening. Um, I don't know if you boys already knew this, but we now know that Lampard knew his job was done after the Leicester game. I didn't know that because uh, I tweeted like he'll still be in charge. So I didn't know that. I don't think many people did. Uh, even the big boys didn't really know that because, you know, you could tell by their articles today. It was a bit of a shock to everyone, right? So no one really knew, but obviously the players did and he did. So I think as soon as that happened, that's when the conversation is heated up between the representatives of Tuchel and Chelsea, like they're already talking, like they're already, you know, due diligence, as I said in my tweets particularly, was done, but that really ramped up and then yeah. Chelsea couldn't find that interim, so yeah, Tuchel came in. So, yeah. Um, it, Lampard obviously knew what was happening, Lampard knew what was coming uh, and then Tuchel's in now, we've got to back him, right? Uh, I know it's hard, but we've got to back him. 100%. Also, with, with Tuchel's though, I remember talking to Julian Laurent. He was, obviously, he's got a lot of insight at PSG and stuff, and he was talking about how Tuchel is a very volatile character and he's, he's, he's fallen out with boards at Dortmund, he's fallen out with the board very publicly at, um, at PSG when he was let go at Christmas. So that kind of tells you what they thought about him there. Obviously, with our board and the way that Marina runs the club in, in, lieu of, in lieu of Roman, how do you reckon his combustible personality is going to get on with... Uh, with with our board and with uh, with the hierarchy of Chelsea, that's what I mean. This this is why it's a good, it's a good question. Like, this is why this screams short term. Like this whole appointment and philosophy and way of we're operating in the last two three days screams short term. Like, I just can't see two cow being here longer than two years. I just can't see it. Isn't um, that isn't that continuous with what Chelsea are, uh, histor- or have historically been like in the last 10, 15 years anyway? You do yeah. go through managers. You know, you Correct. do have short-term success, but then you do rattle through managers you know, <laughs> constantly. No. Yeah, we do, Jamie. It's a great point. But here's the thing, right? This is the contradicting thing that we were all led to believe that this was changing because we, that's why we hired Frank Lambert. Like, mm. uh, we were all led to believe that this is going to be... And, and let's, let's not get it... Let's also not... Let's not get it twisted again. Like, Abramovich craves a dynasty. Like, he does. Like, that's common knowledge. Like, it's common knowledge that he gave Pep Guardiola a blank check back in the late 2000s and was like, I'll pay you whatever you want to come create a dynasty at Chelsea. Like, you know, he does crave that. And I think Abramovich, and we could tell that because he brought Mourinho back and he actually thought Mourinho was going to be that guy again, you know, and he's going to be there for a long time. So, Abramovich craves it and he wants a long term kind of successor but he just can't help but pull the trigger when when the facts and the figures and and, and I said this on another pod and I've said this to a few people that I know that Abramovich deals with numbers he doesn't deal with emotion and he, and that, I think that's evident right um, he yeah. looked at the numbers and the facts and the figures in the last few days or weeks and he didn't like it and that's why he got rid of Lampard he didn't get rid of him because he doesn't like him or doesn't respect him or that he just saw the numbers and that's the businessman in, in Roman right and I think he's in the same thing as hiring Tuchel. I think he goes with Tuchel because, you know, it's kind of low risk in the respect of, you know, Tuchel might bomb himself out in any year anyway. He's probably not, probably not getting him in a massive, massive contract. And he's experienced and he wants to work with good players. He wanted a job. So, you know, if he does well, bonus. If he doesn't, well, he goes again in a year anyway when we get someone else in, right? So, yeah, it's, it's kind of hypocritical a bit of Roman. Um, but... It's, you could say it's hypocritical because he's, he wants his project and it's, it's clearly not happening. But at the same time, I said this in an article I wrote a long time ago now, or I said, and I've said it a few times since and people have kind of laughed at it. But, you know, as soon as he dropped 250 million, the game changed. Yeah. yeah. The game changed. Yeah. Yeah. Expectations changed. And like what, what, especially for the Chelsea fans, I think we were willing to, because we've got to hold our hands up as well. Previously, we've been very, very short of managers that we don't like, that we don't connect with, even though they might be managers that have won us trophies. We just feel like we don't like them, so they're gone. 
we, I feel like all Chelsea fans were ready and willing to give Frank Lampard as much time as he needed. I feel like that's where the anger and the furor is coming from on Twitter and social media is because like, we feel hurt. This is the first one, maybe since Jose went the first time, where it's just like, you feel hurt. Like, you feel like you've been ripped a little bit. Just because we, we'd given everything. We'd, we'd seen the kids come through. We'd seen, we'd seen Lampard develop as a coach. We see like, even, even from Jody Morris being there, just everything felt right. Everything felt good. Even though we've gone through a few bad games this season, and we're on a bad run at the moment. All teams have gone through a bad run. We, we, we were in the cup final last year and finished fourth. So I feel like with Chelsea fans, we're not ever going to turn on the club with Roman. We can't argue what Roman's done since he injected the money to Chelsea. He's made us a completely different entity. But this one hurts. This one feels a little bit like you did it because we weren't in the stadium. You did it because yeah. you could do it now. And that's where I feel like it kind of comes from. But from your point of view, now that we now have to accept that Tuchel is our manager, what's the minimum expectations for the rest of the season? And what's the expectations for next season? Good question. I, think, I don't think the expectations have changed this year. I think Tuchel is still going to have to get top four. He's still going to have to make a run in the FA Cup because the FA Cup means a lot to the club in general. And he's still got to try and go as far in the Champions League as he can. Roman's still obsessed with the Champions League. Um, he, he, the club have always wanted to do well in the FA Cup. I think we've seen that right by the teams we've put out and how far we've gone in every, pretty much every year, right? So that's and then the obvious is top four. Like I mean, that's why Lampard's been sacked. Let's, be, let's get it real. You know, the club clearly thought he wouldn't get there. So that yeah, I don't think expectations have changed at all. I think two shells got to come in, and, and he he must recognise that, right? Um, because he'll do himself no favours if he comes fifth or sixth himself. He'll just get hounded out anyway. So mm. he knows that. He's an experienced veteran. He's, he's managed top clubs, top players. You know, he knows that. So, and in terms of the year after that, I think it's, you know, again, like Roman wanted with Lampard, like you've got the top four now build on it. You know, can you get second or third? And myself and Simon on our platform, we had Dean Jones on, who's like, you know, a really respected journalist in the game. You know, from BR, he's off, he was at, Bleacher Report. Uh, he's he's local to the area, lives in the West London. He's a Fulham fan, but he's very connected with Chelsea. And he said on our pod that you know Roman wanted second or third this year. Like he generally, like, he generally wanted that. And I think that's that now even speaks more volumes because you know Lampard could have got top four. He didn't even believe he was going to get top four, let alone top three or two. So that's probably why he's gone as well. So yeah, Roman's uh, uh, there's no sentiment with this man. So I think, yeah, he's going to have to get top four this year minimum to show. And then next year, he's going to have to get top two, top three. Yeah. Well, would he have gone last year if he didn't finish top four? Because I feel like when he finished top four last year, that was no one expected it, like, like Quaku said earlier. But if he didn't make top four last year, would he have gone then? You know, so it's just the expectations on Frank Lampard were huge for, just, for such a, a manager you know, so early in his, in his career. Yeah. Yeah, I, suppose, he, I suppose carrying on from what you were just saying, as I mean, you're not a million miles off top four. Obviously, the, the Premier League at the moment is the, the craziest this, uh, season. What, you're in ninth and you're five points off fourth, you know? So, who's to say you can't get there? It's just a shame that it can't be with Frank Lampard. Spot on, Jamie. And that's, this is what I mean. And this is why what Dean, G, G, Dean Jones said on our podcast is probably even more prevalent. And I'm, taking more, I'm paying more attention to it now than I did probably when he said it at the time. Is we're not that far off fourth place. You know, but I, we now get the impression, and we probably now know we can even say that fourth place was never good enough. Like that mm. was never going to be good enough. And like I said earlier, the game changed when Havertz, Werner, and them guys came in. And you know, it, you know, we all kind of we 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 fell in love with Lampard, like you even said, Jamie. Is, and I know you're not a Chelsea fan, but even you said like you fell in love with the whole story of Lampard and Mason Mount and everything. We all did, right? And we all loved it. But <clears throat> Roman's not. I don't think Roman's into that as much as we are, which you can't be really, if you're a businessman of that size, you can't be emotional, right? Mm. And um, I think he, you know, he's looked at it from a business point, but, you know, when he, he bought them players and we now know that they weren't really Lampard's players, like Havertz wasn't a Lampard signing, they, they were tracking Havertz for a year and a half before he even signed them. So um, now we know that. Uh, even though Lampard would have been like, yeah, I'll have him. Like, you know, he's a great player. Yeah. Best for him. It's, you know, he, he didn't want him. You know, we know who he wanted. I'm sure we'll mention his name at some point in this podcast, seeing as Jamie's a West Ham fan. But, <laughs> uh, you know, we know who he wanted. And so you can even argue, you can even look at this, boys, now in hindsight is a wonderful thing and it's easy to do this podcast now. But you can even look at this now and go, well, was he really backed? Like, was Lampard really backed to succeed? Yeah. You know? That's the thing, because he took the job and it was a perfect storm. He took the job and we had a transfer ban. What manager worth his salt? Allegra was out there, but... 
what, transfer ban, the best player in the league, the best player that Chelsea have had in the last decade is leaving the club. It's, it's a shit show, really. What, what, what manager worth of salt is going to take that job straight away? They're going to wait for managers to go in there, have a look at it, see if there's anything about this team, see if there's anything about these young players who who plied their trade in the championship the season before, whether it's Reese James, whether it's Tamori, whether it's Mason Mount, whether it's Tony Abraham, the core of our squad last season. There was no manager going to take that. So Lampard took it because he had to take it. The, the job's not going yeah. to not gonna come around that often, really, if ever again. And so, like, he had to take it, but this, this, the, the deck was always stacked against him because top four was the expectation. But as soon as you attain top four, the expectation of Chelsea after that is always the title. So, like, true, yeah. he was in a losing situation from, from the beginning, especially because he made top four. I think if we had just missed out on the last day, they wouldn't have got rid of him. But the expectation this season might not have been as high. But the fact that we got to an FA Cup final, we finished in fourth place. It, 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 I genuinely think that the, lead, uh, the, the board are thinking title this season or title challenge, like a strong title challenge. And he just couldn't sustain that with the team that we've got at the moment. But on his overachievement was in the air what killed him. Yeah. And but and you can argue and obviously I'm trying to be as balanced as I can, even though I'm like fully in the Lampard in camp, which doesn't matter now because he's gone. But I was fighting that battle for a few weeks on Twitter. But you know, now kind of looking at it, you can you've got to be balanced as a Chelsea fan, right? We've got to support the club first, right? More on the manager. I know you agree, quotes. And you know, I think we have to look at it now of yeah, you know, that's all true, but we maybe wouldn't have got these players if we did, didn't make top four. Like, we wouldn't have signed Havertz, Werner. And at the end of the day, they're still employed by Chelsea Football Club. They're still going to be at the club for at least another year or two, at least, right, hopefully longer, if they do well. So I think we have to kind of turn our attention. And it's it's horrible, man, because I'm still, like, mourning. I really am. It's only 12, 19 in the afternoon here. Like, it's still <laughs> But we kind of have to switch our attention now. Yeah. To them, right, and back them, and back to each other. Which, it, it, if you told me that yesterday, this time yesterday, I would have been sick. But yeah, it is, it is reality. It is what it is now, right? So yeah. So what can can Tuchel get the goal? I think the the main problem with Chelsea this year has been the players haven't really been performing. Like the young players have, you know, like Tammy's done well, Mason Mount's done well, Ben Chilwell's yeah. done well. He's been a great. I'd say Ben Chilwell's probably been your best signing. You know, Reese James has been very good, but like. <laughs> Is Tuchel going to be the guy that that gets these players, work, like, you know, playing well? Is he is he going to get Werner firing? Is he going to get you know what's going to happen? How I, I'm I'm as a neutral, I'm a, you know I'm I'm optimistic at the fact that he can do that, but it's a big ask. It's a big big ask. It is, and funny you say that, Jamie. You said Tuchel has been our best signing. He was the only one that Lampard wanted out of the five or six, apparently. Mm. Yeah. Well. Interesting. That, that says it all. That, because we were linked with Guion, who looks like a fantastic player. I'm not going to dispute that. But Chilwell was, like you said, the one that he wanted. Like, we were linked to Tellers. But Lampard seemed to put his foot down on that one. And that he's somebody who you can see has already ingratiated himself with the team. I would challenge that and say that. I think pound for pound, Thiago Silva has been our best signing. But again, that's, we, didn't, we didn't pay any money for him. But it's been... It's, I don't know, man. I'm kind of like lost for words. I had a question in my mind, but I'm just literally just lost for words just because it's just been a hard... Mate, it's been the, the whole day my phone's been dinging off, so I don't know how you've managed to cope with it in terms of like messages coming through to you. But it's yeah. just been... It's been a case of... And you kind of re-aligned re it like well in my head in terms of... Of course, we're sad that Lampard's gone, but we now need to refocus our attention to the fact that we are Chelsea fans first and Chelsea will be here. Chelsea was here before Frank Lampard. Chelsea will be here after Frank Lampard. So we just need to kind of get behind Thomas Tuchel and and see how this see how this goes, despite the fact that Frank's not at the club anymore. Spot on. And I, I want to go back to Jamie's point. He obviously asked the question, right, about two, can Tuchel get the players going again? I mean, that's got to be the plan. Right? That's, that's the first thing you've got to do is get the players on your side. Like before you do tactics, because you can, you can go in there and get a white ball out and go 3-5-2, but if the players don't want to play it or can't play it, then it doesn't really matter. Mm. Tactics don't matter at this point, which is what a lot of people have now argued with Lampard, right? This problem is deeper than tactics. Like people used to bash Lampard for not being the most tactically astute manager in the, in the league, which he was never going to be. Why do you expect him to be? He's only been manager for two, three years. Like that was never the, that was never expected, you know. Mm. But there's, the problems at Chelsea lay a lot further than tactics. So, um, but kind of going on your point, Jamie, it's the players are the number one at any football club now. That's that's modern football. Mm. Uh, they, there's no fear factor from the club anymore in the players. Like Antonio Rudiger. 
I don't want to call out players. I don't believe in like, you know, calling out players or I don't believe in like scapegoating people, but he's the, he's the one that's been discussed a lot. If you go on Twitter today, he's the, he's the one that's got the people going after. He's still in the club. Uh, he's still playing and he's probably going to play more now under two shells. So that tells you how much power that man has and, mm. and tells you how much power our players have. So, yeah, two shells, biggest thing is he's got to get the players on board quick. And I think that Roman's looked at it in respect of German speaking, French speaking, you know, and, and obviously fluent English. But I think Roman is pure because Roman isn't tactical. <laughs> you know, Roman doesn't know football. and He knows football, but you understand what I'm saying. He's not the tactical guy. He's the business guy. And the only thing he's caring about right now, if I was a guest, if I was Ben, is that he gets, that Tuchel gets the best out of the Germans. Like, get the yeah. best out of Havertz and Werner quick. And well, what, who better to do that than someone that's managing the Bundesliga, someone that's part of the, the German philosophy, someone that speaks fluent German, and someone that knows them two players very well. So I think that's what he's gone for. Well, as a West Ham fan, I, I just hope, you know, Tuchel doesn't like Declan Rice as much as Frank did because it might keep him around for a little bit longer. <laughs> uh, uh, I yeah. Um. Do, you reckon, do you reckon from like, because that was one of the bits in the Athletics saying that the board were kind of annoyed at Frank's persistence at Declan Rice. Do you reckon that move is now dead in the water and that's died with Frank leaving us, uh, leaving us as a manager? Um, yeah, I think for now it, it looks very difficult that's going to happen. And I know you, you boys know what I'm smiling, obviously. And, <laughs> and uh, I don't want to allude to it too much because obviously Jamie's a, Jamie's a West Ham fan, so that's, that's definitely the reason I'm smiling, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think Jamie can be very happy in the respect that I think now we can maybe kind of put the Declan Rice to Chelsea rumours might slow down a little bit now, which is unfortunate, man, because as an English person and as a as a fan of Declan and as a fan of obviously what it front that part to say inevitably, I think Declan Rice would do a lot of big things at Chelsea, but mm. you have to respect that he plays the West Ham and you have to respect that, you know, they're doing well right now. And, and that, that move looks less likely now because Lampard's gone. Let's just be honest. Yeah. We're above you in the table just to, just to get, get that in there, you know, just to, just to drop that one in there. <laughs> Casual <seven. laughs> hey, when it, when it rains, it pours, man. When it rains, it pours. <laughs> Two points off top four, but you know, don't worry about it. We'll, We'll carry on. So, <laughs> in terms of the expectations, obviously you said that two shells he's got to finish in the top four this season. We've got Atletico Madrid in in the Champions League, and call me deluded. Call me deluded if you like. I'm oh, deluded. You're deluded <laughs> I, can, yeah, I was going to say it now. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I could just smell it sometimes. I know Atletico Madrid are going good. They're going good in the Liga, but the Champions League is a different is a different affair. We saw Tuchel manage to navigate as well uh, his way to a Champions League final last season. Um, so, do we have any opportunity to win the trophy? Primarily, I'm talking about the Champions League, but do we have the opportunity to win the FA Cup uh, or maybe even a ch- late league challenge um, this season? Do you reckon that's an opportunity for Chelsea? or do you reckon kind of- Two words, two words. Jao Felix, all right? Jao Felix, mate, at Atletico Madrid. You seen him play this year? Yeah. He didn't play this year, all right? Yeah. I mean, it would be the most Chelsea thing to do would yeah. be go on and like make a Champions League final, like 2012, right? Like that, that would be a very Chelsea thing to do. Unfortunately, I don't think we'll see that fairy tale again. I do think Atletico will beat us over two legs. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to say that, by the way. Like that hurts me, but um, but I will say it's kind of you know it's kind of be on your side a little bit, maybe. Like, I would say that. It would be the most Chelsea thing to do, right? Is go through all this turmoil, go through all this unexpected seeing hurt and hate, and now I'll see the underdogs massively more so now. Yeah. And for us to go and beat Atletico, and then obviously it depends on the run after that. But yeah. yeah, if I'm a betting man, I'm going Atletico, but I hope we can get through. But in terms of your your overall question, Quaker, obviously we're not winning the league. Yeah. Um. Uh. I think you know the FA Cup's our biggest chance to get a trophy. I think a couple of people, couple of teams have gone out now. Obviously, we've got a nice, easy draw in the next one. Um, so, you know, anything can happen in the FA Cup. But Chelsea typically do well in that. We prioritise that. So, that's our biggest chance for the trophy this year, for sure. Oh, and imagine if it would have been Frank Lampard missing it. Oh. That, that's, that's what kills me about last season. Like, we, lost, we lost to Arsenal. I feel like if Pulisic don't get injured, we win that game. Um, but, I agree. And Anthony Taylor doesn't happen when we win that game. <laughs> exactly. But do you think, okay, back on that then, if we win the FA Cup, is, is Lampard afforded much more time or is it a case that this was just dead because of, no? Nah? I don't think that changes much. I, I'd like to think it would, but I don't think it would have. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, I can't see that. I think like uh, the FA Cup, you know, for example, like a David Moyes came out this season and, 
you know, if David Moyes wins the FA Cup, I think if we get relegated next year, you know, like I feel like we're more likely to keep him around because of the size of our club. But for Chelsea, like an FA Cup, you know, once a season or something along that line is almost as like expected, you know, like the, the expectations are so much greater at Chelsea that I just think a, a cup like the FA Cup isn't as, you know, big as it once was or well respected. So I don't know. Yeah. Do, do you think, um, obviously bombarding your questions, but it's kind of good to get your insight on it. Oh, hit me, man. Hit me. In terms of these players that are, these players that we brought in, in terms of Kai Havertz and Timo Werner, Hakim Ziyech, out of all those players, who do you think will be one that will leave a lasting Chelsea legacy? Because at the moment, in terms of signings that we've we've made, obviously we've alluded to Ben Chilwell and Thiago Silva has been amazing, but we, he's 35 years old. He's not going to go on forever. In terms of like out of Hakim Ziyech and Timo Werner and Kai Havertz, do you think they will come good at Chelsea under Tuchel? Uh, Malang Sar as well. Malang Sar, you, you, you got him coming in the start of next season. Uh, God, he, he smells bad, doesn't he? Boy, he smells bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I think there's potential to. There's definitely. I, I, what threw me off there a little bit? You said to Shell specifically, right? I think uh, if you if you ask me like Chelsea in general, yeah. maybe my answer would be a bit different. But you, I don't know if that was a, a cheeky like you know a little host switch up there, which is nice of you. <laughs> Uh, under two show, like you know, there's definitely. I, I have to say yes, but I'm trying to be optimistic and say that yeah, he does speak obviously fluent German. And obviously, uh, Hakim speaks numerous languages as well, so mm. I think he can build a relationship there. And he's managed these kind of players, right? He managed Neymar, he managed Mbappe, yeah. um, managed players of you know. And Ziyech, let's be honest, is a personality, and he he's got a bit of an edge to him. And yeah. I think two has got experience in managing that, so. Um, I think he's, you know, all the boxes would say, I'll tick all the boxes and say yeah, he's got a chance to make them do well. And I would say yes, more likely he'll get something well, well out of them. In terms of Chelsea, who I think will be, who will leave the lo- longest lasting legacy at Chelsea Football Club out of those three, I think, I, I don't want to sit on the fence, but I think Havertz has the most potential to, because I actually generally think that if you build your team around Kai mm. Havertz, that he is an absolute player. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so I think he has the most potential to. If we surround him with the right players and we build our team around him, not like we do with Hazard, I think we learn that much, we learn that lesson, right? And we do that, then Havertz will be the biggest legacy. However, I do, if I, if, you know, if you gave me a hundred, hundred dollars, hundred pounds, right, and said, who's going to be at Chelsea the longest and who's going to be the most popular, I'll probably go Timo Werner. Okay, fair enough. See, with Timo Werner, I've, I've said it on quite a few pod episodes, though, um, excuse me for repeating it, but we... When Chelsea have a successful striker, they, they come in the mould that I recognise, whether it's Jimmy Floyd or whether it's Didier Drogba or whether it's Diego Costa. These strikers that have decent goal scoring records, but their, their performance is not predicated on the goals they score. They have a, a greater effect on the team overall. There was some uh, season where Didier, Didier Drogba scored eight goals, but they were some of his best, best seasons as a Chelsea player. And Diego Costa had a decent goal scoring record for two of the three seasons there, but the one in the middle was, was awful. He, he finished ninth or tenth. But like, they're strikers that affect the game in, in ways that pure goal scorers don't. And when we've gone and signed pure goal scorers in the form of like Shevchenko or in the form of Torres, Murata is slightly different. In my head, and maybe this, this is me being a bit too linear, I just see Timo Werner falling into that category. And maybe it's just an aesthetic thing. Maybe it's just like a, being scarred by the past. But like I feel like I recognise what a Chelsea striker looks like. And to me, Timo Werner doesn't look like a Chelsea striker right now anyway. What's your thoughts on that? I think that's he's, play, point. he's playing left wing as well, by the way. You know, yeah. he's playing left wing. So done in no favours. That's done in no favours. And I kind of understood why Lampard did that because he was trying to figure out his best team. He knows Werner can do a job there. He's got Tammy knocking on the door. He's got Giroud he's got to keep happy. This is why I keep saying politics, right? There's politics in Chelsea football club, there's politics in football. So I do understand why he did that with Werner, but he didn't do him any favours, like Werner any favours, let's be honest, and obviously subsequently Lampard. Uh, Quaker, I don't, I don't, I can't disagree with you, mate, because of, of history, right? And like, you know, we can't argue the fact that this has happened. Like, this has happened at Chelsea numerous times. Uh, I will throw in a little terms and conditions or a little clarification that I won't accept or hear any hate off Fernando Torres. Uh, that's like, why I, I think you know now, Quaker. That's my favourite player of all time. Like, I'm not hearing, <laughs> not hearing anything on it, so I won't. I won't be entertaining any nonsense on that. Matter, <laughs> but 
<laughs> I'm a fan of Shevchenko, Morata, Falcao, etc. So, yeah, no, with Werner, there are worries about that. Where I think Werner might be a little bit different, though, is I think, you know, Morata wasn't a system player. Falcao's not a system player. Shevchenko is a little bit different. I think he was kind of older and past it. Let's just, just be honest at this point, even though I did get his shirt and I was buzzing his sign. Um, I think Werner is a system player, but in a positive way. That if you put him in the right system, he will bag. Like, I think he will bag. And I think Chelsea and Tuchel have to put him where he's going to perform. I think even, we've seen a couple of little, like, you know, even recently, I know he missed the penalty and stuff, but his last two or three appearances have not been, he's been sharp. Like, he's putting in the work. And that's because we played him in behind, like, a Tammy. Well, like, put him somewhere. Like, obviously, at Leipzig, he was behind Paulson, right? And two are buzzing off each other. I think if you leave Timo, if you put Timo Werner in a, in a good position, he will succeed because of these attributes, because of these, by the way, his energy and work great and mentality is fantastic. He works and works and works. So that's where I think he might be a little bit different. But it's definitely not just on Werner. It's, it's on Chelsea even more so to put him in the right environment to do mm. that way. We didn't do that with the previous names you mentioned. Quicker. We kind of just let Falcao, you know, we can't let Falcao and Morale, we kind of just let them swing. Like, we can't let them sink. Like, we didn't yeah. really try and... And, and, and do that for them. You know, we didn't try and change our team and mould it for Morata. It kind of just happened. Whereas I think Werner, we have to, you know, we've got to check, somebody's got a chance to put him and Kai. You've got to build your team around them too. You just simply have to. In, mm. in terms of that though, in terms of front men, we've been linked with every front man under the sun. But one that's been kind of like pernian recently is Halland. Um, and I've seen that from a couple of sources. Obviously, you don't know what to believe these days in terms of transfer rumours. So, how much credibility is there in the Haaland link to Chelsea? Yeah, I've I've wrote articles in this. I've been um, I'm pretty connected in this situation. It's um, from what I'm told and I've heard. It's you know Chelsea are interested. Chelsea have always wanted to be a, a like whenever there's an update, they want to know about it. They they actively trying to build a relationship with Mina Raya, obviously the super agent that is Haaland's agent. They're trying to repair that relationship because it was a bit tenuous after the. Um, you know, the Mur- Murata and the Lukaku situation. I don't know if you boys are aware of that. But it was basically, we were supposed to get Lukaku under Conte and it just didn't work out. Then we got Murata because of the agent, really. So we're trying to repair that relationship, he check. That's what he's kind of doing in the background. So Chelsea are doing all they can to make position themselves. And they are interested. He is top of the list. He's scouted. And, and Chelsea will, if they can. And there's a chance, right? Because Harlem can turn around and go, I don't want to go to Chelsea. And then Chelsea won't bid anyway. There'd be no point in that, right? But if there's a sniff that he would entertain an offer from Chelsea, Chelsea will go for them. Like, they will. Um, I don't know if that's changed now in 24... Again, this is me talking before... Um, this would be me talking if Lampard was still in charge. I haven't checked in with the people who would know if that's changed. But from what I'm... You know, I'm talking even like two or three days ago. Chelsea... Uh, and that, even now, you know, you can even argue that this might even support that fact. Like Chelsea might even be more willing to go and get Harlan now. You know? so, it's your Dortmund link, uh, link isn't it, with Tuchel, obviously. Exactly. So you yeah. might even argue, you can even argue they might even go for him even more. And, and the latest is that Chelsea might even go for him this summer. He's released clauses until 2022. Um, but Chelsea, there's entertainment. There's, there's Sorry, not entertainment. There's, there's rumours that they'll go for him this summer. Kind of like we did with Havertz and Werner, right? Like we just jumped in before everybody else could get him. We might do that, but... I've always maintained, boys, um, from my personal opinion, and kind of obviously you hear from this guy, I hear from it, and everyone's opinions are different. All the sources give different things. If I kind of mould them all into one and put my personal perspective on top of it, I don't think Chelsea will get a Harlem, personally. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, see, with, with that, it's just when you see those links and then you see like our, our young boys who are coming through, like if th- those links must not be great thing to Tammy, who's yet to sign a new contract. I know he triggered the extension last year, but he's still yet to sign a contract. Somebody who's our top goal scorer this season, he's in double figures, and he's all he's done is perform in a Chelsea shirt. As much as people might not fuck with the, his style of play and might think he needs to improve in this area, in this area, the kind of striker that Tammy Abraham is, by the age of 26, 27, 28, he's going to be an absolute monster. Um, and see someone that I feel like we we should we should be prioritising and keeping and not keeping happy because you, you play who's on form, you play who makes your team win. But like, these links with players that are in direct positions of our, our, our youth team players, I, I don't know how, or our young players, sorry, I don't know how great that is for morale because it seems that Chelsea has a split right now. The older players that you touched on before, Rudiger, even Alonso, there's the players that, I wouldn't say got Lampard the sack, but 
they got Lampard the sack. They weren't happy and they made their they made their opinions very, very clear. Obviously, I don't know as much as you do, but from the outside, that sounds like that's what happened. Um, with the Alonso thing, when we drew three or West Brom, him storming off to the bus, I think that's your kind of set ties with him. I think he's someone who's got influence in the dressing room, same as Rudiger. I think Aspel has had to be the kind of the peacemaker between between the young players and the and the older players. So, uh, is, is there like a fracture in the Chelsea dressing room at the moment? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, there is. Uh, it's common knowledge there's a division in the dressing room. It's common knowledge. I tweeted earlier when I fir- the first thing I tweeted about this whole lamp. I'm not going to tweet a million things, but the first thing I tweeted was this smells. And this is, by the way, I literally woke up, saw the messages, and and tweeted like I didn't kind of. And that's probably emotional of me. I don't really do that usually, but I didn't look at the, the messages that would give me more information. Let's say like the people who know more. I didn't look at their messages or I didn't reach out to them. I literally just read the one or two that I saw. Went on Twitter and was like, "This stinks of player power and player division," yeah. and and then obviously I, I come to find out that yeah, that's the case, and then I found out more about that and who it is and and what happened. And trust me, man, like you know, just to kind of clarify on it, there's a lot more going on at Chelsea Football Club than we even realise. Like even I realise someone who's like obviously connected, knows people in the club, out of club, around the club, and you know. I've got good sources and links to it. Like, even I didn't realise how much of a mess, for lack of a better word, that there is in the political sense of Chelsea Football Club. But to kind of stay on course and saying your question, Kwaku, or Jamie, I can't remember who asked it now, but um, yeah, there's a division in, in it was Kwaku, there's a division in the, uh, in the dressing room for sure. And it's pretty obvious, I think, who it is, right? It's, it's going to be the, I mean, it's, it's pretty common knowledge now, so I don't need to, I won't get myself in trouble, hopefully, but it's pretty much the, the old guard and the players that have been phased out versus the academy young boys. That's pretty much what it is. Yeah. Okay. I see, that's just, it's all just, it seems like for something that was so promising in the summer, and I feel like that's where fans need to be careful as well. The transfer window is not a trophy. And we, I got caught up in it. Oh, we signed Timo Bernard, we signed Kai Havertz. Oh, we did. Wait, wait, he, he tipped him to win the league, by the way. He tipped him. First episode. First episode. He yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I did. Whoa, whoa, I did. Ah, whoa, 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 exactly. What, what I will say, though, what I will say is that we can all agree that Chelsea have underperformed the season. If we had yeah. performed to how you would have expected us to perform, we, we would be in the, in the title race. You know what I mean? We just severely underperformed. So I don't, think it was, I don't think it's due to the fact that we haven't got a good enough team. I just think that things just went on behind the scenes that meant that we... Yeah, 100%. If we performed to how we expected, we'd be there. We'd be in the title race right now. Yeah, it's a fair point. And I think a lot of people are now using the excuse of, well, the squad's not good enough. And like, that's not true. Like, that's not, that's true. not true. The squad is good enough. Um, it's just not. And that's where, you know, you've got to be balanced. Like, you've got to be fair. Like, yeah. I, I, will, I will always maintain that I don't have an agenda. But, yeah, the squad's good enough. It's just figuring out what makes the squad tick and what makes the players tick. And yeah, man, I, I, I feel like James enjoying it. The more and more we get emotional about it, I feel like James enjoying it. I know, I know. No, I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking. If Chelsea lose to to Wolves on Wednesday, when when is it to show out? I'm just wondering. <laughs> well, it will be. Trust me, it will be. I mean, on certain platforms. If you go on Twitter and we lose on when there will be tweets saying to show out. There'll be a hashtag 110, and that's oh, our mate. football club. And yeah. you know, we love it and we'll die for it and, and all that, all the rest of it. Uh, you know. But if you're a rational, balanced, mature fan, you can also take a step back and go, sometimes I hate my football club and like sometimes mm. our football club is a joke. And that's exactly what I felt this morning. Like that's pretty emo- that's as emotional as I usually get on like podcasts and Twitter because yeah. I try to keep it rational and balanced. Yeah. You know, I understand how football works. I, I totally get how football works. I've been around it a long time. But you know, I, that was my first feeling. Like I woke up <clears throat> actual club at the minute. You know, and then you calm down, right? And then you start thinking. But Chelsea, it's a circus, man. It's a fun. It's great when we're winning these and titles and that. But it, it, at the end of the day, it's still a circus. It, it is still a circus, and, and Roman is the is the ringleader. And and we like I say we've got to be balanced. We obviously we're in mourning right now, but we we're spoiled as football fans. We've experienced the highest of the highs. Um, and right now, I might feel like lowest of the lows, but really and truly, we're we're sitting here pleading poverty of a team that's in the top half with four points off the top uh, top of the old oh, top four and James James a West Ham fan who's never seen a team win, win anything. That's not even the dig. That's just like <laughs> that's not even the no, not even the dig. That's just me being like 
So as, <laughs> <laughs> so as Chelsea fans, we've got to be a bit realistic and be like, we got to an FA Cup final last year. We're in a very privileged position and we've got world-class players. So let's just get behind the team and, and see how she can play. Just want to clarify, West Ham won the World Cup in 1966. Thank you very much, Dan. Thank you very much. I was just about to say that. And we are winning the FA Cup this year. David Moyes has already said you know, he, he wants to win it for Nobe. So, yeah. It's, we'll talking about, by the way, talking about fickle fans and, like, and, and hashtags and that, West Ham fans wanted Moyes gone a month ago. Oh, please. Please, Dan. No, for me, I, I've, I've backed Moyes all season. I've backed Moyes all Fair season. Fair to you as an individual, but the fan base in much. general. Fan base in general. Jake, hey, Dan, I don't know if you've seen the episode or not, but Jamie at the beginning of the season predicted West Ham to get relegated. So anything that he said, any, when you put your team to get relegated, anything that you say about them going forward is irrelevant. Wait, like, who's got Chelsea winning the league? Jamie's got West Ham going down. What? <laughs> Wait, what are you smoking? What were you smoking that day, boys? The reason is, the reason is, I've said this before. Um, West Ham's squad right now is was was tiny at the start of the season, right? And it's tiny now. We got we had we we, we had a squad of nineteen. We've just let Snodgrass go and Hilaire go, and we've got three keepers in there. Like in terms of our like our backup in the squad, we're one or two injuries away from being bang in trouble, and you know our season in faltering. If anything happens to Antonio right now. We've we've only got young strikers that are unproven in the Premier League to back him up, you know that, and that was the start of the season. That's why I said, you know, relegation though, relegation. Oh, shut up, Kwaku. Relegation. Shut up, mate. One one injury to West Ham, and you know what we're talking about one injury to West, and it's not Antonio, by the way. Yeah. West Ham season's done. Yeah, yeah. Def- are you talking about the best defensive midfielder in the Premier League? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> the guy who's not going to Chelsea. <laughs> love it, love it, Declan. That, that, that you is. loved him. You loved him, mate. You loved. Perfect place to end the podcast, Dan. We massively appreciate it, man. Like you jumped on. I know that your phone has been dinging today. Obviously, uh, a pretty big deal on Twitter. Macca Sport. Make sure you go and follow him. Um, and yeah, it's been, it's been fun, man. It's been fun reconnecting. We haven't talked for a little while, so it's it's been cool getting you on. Um, obviously, make like I say, make sure you follow him on Twitter. What, what else have you got going on at the moment? Because I saw that you are. Uh, or you mentioned that you're doing some things to Cy Phillips. So do you want to elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, man. Um, so, yeah, joined up with Simon Phillips, who's Cy Phillips Sport on Twitter. Uh, he has a platform now called Cy Phillips Talks Chelsea, where, you know, just doing articles, podcasts, all that fun stuff. Right now it's free to join. So all the, like, you get a newsletter every, I believe, Tuesday. So one coming out tomorrow. Um, we get a free newsletter every week, just kind of with articles and stuff on that. We do a podcast every week on a Thursday. It comes out on a Friday. And yeah, just on there, man, like, you know, like I was talking to you boys off air, it was, uh, I've known Simon for a long time and, you know, he's been wanting to do this for a while. He's very connected. He's obviously massive on Twitter and he's massive in the Chelsea world. He's very well connected and, you know, he, he, he managed to convince me after a year of tough negotiations and he got me on board. So yeah, I'm just working with him, doing a lot of stuff with him now. And uh, yeah, so I've just been doing that, man. And, you know, obviously coaching full time, got my coaching gig over in LA so I'm, I'm coaching full time which is my my true love and my real love and then Chelsea's my part-time heartbreak on the side which is nice and then uh yeah just well covered in the football world man hopefully one day I'll be on a I'll be on talk sport and then we'll go from there yeah <laughs> <laughs> man we'd love to have you on make sure like I say go follow Dan and Simon on uh on Twitter we'll put their social down in the description also make sure you like and subscribe to this video um, follow us on Twitter. Me and Jamie are not too active on Twitter, but obviously that's where Danny's big. So we're going to make sure we uh, we put this out on Twitter and make sure make sure we increase our activity on that platform because we've been slacking a little bit. On Instagram, it's um, at We Talk Football Podcast. On Facebook, it's We Talk Football Podcast. And yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be bringing you some more episodes next weekend. Cheers, guys. <laughs>